Osmosis is a type of membrane transport that is passive, but it refers to the movement of water specifically. So passive movement of water. All right, let's see what this looks like. So here we've got a container. It has more solute on this side than that side. Solute is the stuff inside um, the individual particles, glucose in this case. Water is the solvent, and this whole thing is a solution. So most solutes that dissolve in water, often they can't pass across a semi-permeable membrane. So we need, to, but water can often, um, it, it can somewhat. So if a solute can't move down its concentration gradient, in this case, let's say the drive for glucose is this way, instead, water will move. Water is going to move from the area of low solute concentration to the area of high solute concentration. You also could say it's moving from the area of high relative water concentration to lower water concentration. And this is a spontaneous process designed to for the system to reach equilibrium. It wants to reach equal solute concentration. What that's called is osmolarity. So osmolarity is a measure of solute concentration. And osmolarity is higher on this right side than this left. So there's a drive for water, an osmotic gradient, an osmotic drive for the water to move to the right. What would this look like over time? It's gonna look like this. Osmosis has moved the water to the right. We now have osmolarity in equilibrium. And that was spontaneous. All right. Okay, let's see this again, but with some numbers, for those of you who numbers might help with. Um, so again, we've got milliosmoles. That's just a milla, like um, a thousandth of osmolarity. Osmolarity is, again, the concentration of solutes. So to start with, we've got higher osmolarity over here than over here. Water's going to move from low to high osmolarity. This is also called moving from to the side that is hyper osmotic. Hyper means higher. It's a relative term, kind of like directional terms. This side is hypo osmotic compared to that side. So water will move from low to high to reach equilibrium, which is going to look like this. Now, milliosmoles are equal on the right and left after osmosis. So again, osmolarity is in equilibrium. In this case, we can see it with the numbers. We're also, when we get to cells, which is right now, we're gonna talk about tonicity. Tonicity is not the same thing as osmolarity, but we're gonna use it instead. We're talking about cells. So do this learning check. Um, and when you see tonic here, that's pretty much similar to osmotic. It's just applying to cells which do have variable permeability due to their membrane proteins. Pause if you need to. Just that one thing. Water, it's going to move in. Right. And there's this one hypertonic. Okay, actually got basically the answers here. So here's that same thing again, basically. Um, and this is the one we just had on that previous slide. So when the outside solution is hypotonic, the inside solution will be hypertonic compared to the outside. 
That's always, if one's high, the other one's relatively low and vice versa. In that case, water is going to flow in, the arrows here, and could cause the cell to lyse. The opposite is true when we have a high osmolarity solution, the cell is going to be hypotonic compared to the outside. Water will leave the cell and the cell will shrink. Unhappy cells. Iso means the same. So the osmolarity inside and outside are in equilibrium and we have no net movement of water and our cell is happy. This is an image of what that looks like in terms of red blood cells. And this actually happens to red blood cells. Um, hopefully not in your body, but um, there are cases in which it does. I mentioned before that water can move across the membrane, either across the plasma, um, the phospholipid bilayer, or through a protein using facilitated diffusion. That facilitated diffusion the protein required for that is called aquaporin. So aquaporin is required for facilitated diffusion of water, H2O. Here, this is showing actually some water that can pass across via simple diffusion. Aquaporin is selective for water. It's present in virtually all cells, making the plasma membrane more permeable to water than it would be otherwise. And so cells are permeable to water. That's why they are susceptible to osmotic changes um, in your body and that cells are sensitive to that. But the, also the amount of aquaporins can be regulated to um, regulate water where water goes, big for the, the urinary system and the kidneys. Learning check here, two questions. And then one more, practicing your hypo, hyper, isotonic. <laughs> 